Hi folks, welcome back. This video is on Venn diagrams. If you're wondering where this came from, no, Venn diagrams are not covered in the textbook. I think it's actually good for me to challenge you a little bit in these lectures and make you apply logic, apply our system Boole in some novel ways without um, giving you readings to um, prepare you for it. So you're gonna have to problem solve in this video and, and, and uh, figure out some novel stuff. And this is actually gonna be really enriching and maybe even fun too. Now we said that formal logic is possible because logic is based on structural relations of sentences or arguments. And those structural relations are what validity is about or logical truth concerns. Uh, what that means is any way in which we could model or encode those structural relations can do the logic of this course. It could be in electrical circuits or it just could be in pictures. So it turns out that Venn diagrams have enough complexity to them to model all of Boolean logic, uh, or all of sentential propositional logic, all of the truth functional connectives. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in this, this video is challenge you to figure out how to model these sentences, our sentences of Boole, in Venn diagrams. Uh, what that means is we could actually have done this entire course just with pictures instead of with sentences and symbols. Uh, but since you're used to using symbolic systems, you know some language, uh, languages, then uh, it's actually a lot easier for us to read uh, strings of symbols than it is for us to read uh, strings of pictures. But nonetheless, the whole course could have done, been done in pictures. Here's how we're gonna convert um, system sentences of Boole into Venn diagrams. Every row of a truth table corresponds to one of these regions of the diagram. And here's how it works. When, when P is true, that means you're inside the P circle. When Q is true, you're inside the Q circle this circle over here. So row one means we're inside the P circle and inside the Q circle. So that's why this is region one where the two circles overlap. See row two is where P is true and Q is false. So that's why that's this little Pac-Man like moon region over here. Uh, this is where you're in the P circle but not in the Q circle because it's false on row two. And of course the bottom row of the truth table is always gonna be this negative space where you're not in any of the circles because the bottom row of the truth table is where all of the sentences are false. So each row corresponds to a region of the diagram. And now we just need some convention about how we're gonna use these things. Here's the convention I'll stipulate. Shaded means true. So this sentence is true just on row one. And so this picture now encodes conjunction. This encodes where P and Q is. It would just be in this region. This is the only part that's true. The rest of them are false. So that's why I leave those unshaded. Okay, so if you can, so this picture is a representation of this sentence of Boole. Here, um, I'll show you disjunction now. Actually, you tell me, you figure out disjunction. What would the picture for disjunction look like if you had to write one uh, in Venn diagram form? Okay, that was your chance to pause the videos. It would look like this. Disjunction is true on these three rows, one through three, so we would have to shade all three of those regions and we have to leave four blank. So this would be our picture of disjunction. All right, so those are the basic ones. Um, now let's do something a little more interesting. Uh, here's a sentence, you give me the Venn diagram. That's, that's the game. So pause your videos now and draw me the picture. Okay, that was your last chance to pause the videos. Uh, the first thing you need, oh, uh, if, if you had trouble figuring it out, I also have round two of the question makes it easier. Um, which of these is the right one? Um, Okay, let's talk about the answer. This is your last chance to pause your videos. Um, okay, first we need to compute this truth function to know what picture we're supposed to even be drawing. So I invert the values of Q. I'm just gonna start computing this, this from the inside out. Then I can compute the disjunction using P and using those values in blue. And then of course, I just need to invert those values of purple for the wide scope negation. And uh, once once I have my truth function computed, then I need to just see how to translate this into the diagram. The only region I'm gonna shade is region three. Uh, so this, is, this was answer C in the multiple choice version because that, the only time this sentence is true is when Q is true and P is false. I'm just in the Q circle and I'm not in the P circle. So there's the picture that that corresponds to. All right, now if you figure that out, I said this was gonna be challenging. Here's a sentence with three atomics and of course, you know that you can represent Venn diagrams with three things. So here's your Venn diagram. Now you draw me a picture of this one. Let's do something a little more fun. Okay, pause your videos now and see if you can draw the picture. Okay, that was your last chance to work on this. 
Um, okay, no, I give you one more chance. Here's some multiple choice if you would like to uh, rely on the multiple choice version of the problem, if your picture that you came up with corresponds with one of these. Okay, now let's get to the answer. Uh, this problem is a little more interesting because I didn't tell you how three atomics actually corresponds to the Venn diagram, but I'm hoping you could have figured it out. What we have to do is we have to make sure we get our reference columns correct in canonical form. And each row of this truth function then, this truth table, is going to correspond to one of these regions. Re region one, of course, is always going to be in the center of the Venn diagram, where all the circles overlap. And region eight is going to be this negative space out here. And where's circle two going to be? Region two. Well, that's going to be where you're in P and Q, but not in R. So that's why I've labeled this here. P and Q are overlapping, but R is not there. Or why, where's region five going to be? That's, then I'm in Q and R, but not P. So that's why this is region five. So there's eight rows to this truth table. And when you have three circles, there's going to be eight regions in the Venn diagram. So maybe you're starting to believe me that everything in this, in Boolean logic really can be represented in Venn diagrams. So the next thing we need to do, once we figured out how the translation, how the correspondence works, we need to compute this truth function. And when I computed it, I only got a true on row four. This was the sole T value that I came across. So what that means is we have to shade the P area, but not any of the others. Uh, so it looks like this. So that's the final picture you should have gotten. That was answer D on the multiple choice, um, if you answered that way. So, hey, if you figured that out, that's really awesome. Uh, you, you, you're doing novel stuff now from the logic that you learned in the class. You're now problem solving, and you're not just listening to us tell you how to use it. Now, you might be wondering how to draw a Venn diagram with four or five atomics. You might think it can't be done. It can be done. We just have to depart from circles. So if you wanted to do a Venn diagram, if, if on the exam we give you one with five atomics, you just have to shade a, a picture like this. Or this is, this is sort of a more elegant way to do it because the shapes are all the same, these ovals. Venn, Venn did it with these kind of rainbow patterns where he used the three circles. And then if you actually create these, these arcs like this, you can get every possible region on this diagram as you can do with this diagram. Okay, now I was just... Uh, kidding around. I'm not, we're not going to make you shade uh, an absurdly complicated diagram like this on the test, but you are fully responsible for doing the one with at least three atomics um, and eight rows. Now, uh, what's even, what's really cool is, um, so three is the most you can use a two-dimensional um, circle for uh, and actually get a Venn diagram, but if you go three-dimensional spheres, you can actually represent four sentences. So, Check this out, this is really cool. This is four atomic sentences, A, B, C, and D. And this is actually a Venn, a three-dimensional Venn diagram. Now, what, what I want you to do to see if you can understand what this, this picture is, look at this row right here, or look at this region, this, this shaded chunk. Um, which row of the truth table, if I give you a four-dimensional one to shade, which, which region does this correspond to on the truth table? That's, that's the question for you to figure out. So pause your videos now and see if you can, can come to grips with all this visual information you're trying to make sense of. Okay, that was your last chance to pause your videos. Uh, if you're not bothering to pause your videos, come on. Uh, I told you this is going to be challenging. This is um, really fun stuff to figure out. Now, if we're doing a truth table with four atomics, it has 16 rows. I just gave you a fraction of it here because if I made all 16, it would be too hard to read. So for, with four atomics, the furthest one to the right always alternates TF, TF, TF. So that's why D is like that. C is going to have two Ts, two Fs, two Ts, two Fs. When we get all the way out to A, it's going to have eight Ts and then eight Fs. So I didn't continue the truth table down here. Now, this, so the thing to figure this, how you could have figured this out was, this is region A here. So being in the inner circle, this circle here is A. So this is being, not being in any of those circles, A, B, C, or D. So what this row, this, the answer is this is row 16. This is the row on which all of the atomics are false. And notice this one here. This is the inner row. This is row one. And each of these successive layers is showing you different degrees of intersection among the various um, examples. Okay. All right. So maybe if that was too hard, let me give you one more question then. Um, here's question number two. Um, which row is this? This is your second, this row, this is this row question. So pause your videos now uh, and see if you can figure this one out. Okay, that was your last chance. 
um, this is row eight, because this region here is when you're in circle A, but not in any of the other circles. That's what this is telling us. You see, this here's row one, this is row 16, this is row one, this is, this is where several of them are overlapping. This is where just two of them are overlapping here. Um, and this is where none are overlapping. These are just the, the distinct circles. So this is, this is row one where, where uh, A alone is, alone is true. This is, to be over here would be where D alone is true. This is where C alone is true. This is where B alone is true. So if you look on my truth table here, it's row eight where A is true and all the rest is false. So this is what row eight would correspond to. Okay, so what we were talking about in this video is how truth tables can actually be represented by Venn diagrams. Um, okay, thanks.